Good evening. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. Good. Um, Jim Kuzum with Human Resources. Um, I have with me today Angie Coslow. She's our uh, Human Resources Manager. And Kim Homeyer to my right. Uh, she handles all, all of our fiscal and testing activities for us. So um, our presentation tonight, when, when we gave it to the mayor, um, was probably fairly brief just because we don't have a whole lot of changes. Uh, HR is uh, structured into four different activities. Administration, that's our largest portion. Civil service, where all of our testing activities occur. Employee relations is the benefits for um, current active employees and retirees and dependents. Labor relations, uh, you'll notice we had some big savings in FY19. Uh, we have not filled the labor relations manager position. We will hopefully have that filled very soon. Uh, it is budgeted uh, and expected to be filled for FY20. We did also in FY19, we gave up one position, that was the training position, so our head count went from 11 to 10, but effectively for all of the current fiscal year, we had nine staff. You'll see as far as our budget itself, um, the variances are not great. Uh, we're reducing expenses by $19,000 in total. Um, about 1.43%. Uh, the largest in, is in personnel services, and that is because we anticipate filling the labor relations manager at a lower cost than the, than the uh, former labor relations manager. The next slide is just our budget. Um, the bulk of it is for personnel services, contractual services. I'll say most of that is coming from our testing lines. Um, in FY19, we did police entry and we started fire entry um, examinations. In FY20, we'll be finishing up fire entry. We'll be doing another police entry examination. Fire promotional, we anticipate doing both electrical apprentice and possibly fireman, or, fireman and oiler. Those are all tested positions um, and that'll be coming out of the civil service lines. As I mentioned, the biggest reduction on our, on our lines is in personnel services, again, due to the labor relations manager coming in at a lower cost. Our, our contractual lines, it's just a reduction uh, to spread all, all out across. There's nothing significant that I can point to that says that this is a large dollar drop. Now, Jim, you are fully staffed at this time? Once we get our labor relations so manager, you're at we'll nine be fully of 10, staffed. Then. We're at nine right now, and once we get a labor relations manager, we'll be at 10. Thank you. Our, our staffing, as you see, we have two minority uh, staff members, and I'm the only male of, of, of nine. So I'm the minority here. So. <laughs> it's all good. Great, I, a great, great group, too. Um, our telecommunications just increase and our travel. We expect to just to, to continue doing some things that, that are necessary. We do try and keep our travel expenses as low as possible. In 2020, even with being short, two people, uh, as I mentioned, we were able to complete police entry examination, fire entry. Uh, I would of note, uh, Kim, who handles all of our testing, uh, she has been proactive and she is now self-administering the test with the vendor, and, and that has saved us $11,000 just in that one line. Um, as I mentioned, we did police promotional this year. We welcome on board 65 new employees, regular full-time employees. Um, and that's both hires and rehires. Temps, we probably had about approximately the same number, like 60. Uh, we, we did say goodbye to 45 uh, employees. We had 37 resignations. Uh, we are currently administering benefits to approximately 4,200 employees. That's active, retired, and, re and, and, their, and their dependents. We did get our applicant tracking system upgraded. We're looking at some things for uh, 2020, uh, greater automation. We're looking at... Um, some salary uh, benchmarking, that's one of our goals that I don't have listed. Um, we wanna relaunch our training activities. Angie will be here a year next month and now that she's got her feet wet, hopefully she can uh, work with the department so I'm getting some training relaunched. Um, of course, we always wanna have a positive customer experience both for um, our employees and the people that walk in our door that are interested in employment with the city. Um, if you have any questions, um, I'm ready and available for whatever you have. When do you anticipate filling the labor relations position? We've uh, completed the interviews. I would expect 
within weeks. Okay. Thank so you. So there may still be some money coming out of FY, the current fiscal year, but I do expect her, that person to be on board in place March 1. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Director? Yes. I don't think we've, I'm going to bring up a topic I don't think we've ever discussed at a city council meeting. There's an individual that is responsible for the city's communications with IMRF, mm -hmm. Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund. Yes. And a few years ago when I checked into it, that person resided in human resources, they not, still in, do. not in Bureau of the Budget. Who is the person currently responsible for that task? Sarah Taylor is the authorized agent. And in reading uh, or looking through our, uh, some of the information in the budget, our employer contribution rate uh, dropped from whatever it was a year, from 16% a year ago, and at some point it dropped down to 15% because of a very good rate of return um, in calendar 2017. That'd be correct. When does that rate of uh, contribution by the employer change? Is it every year at the same time or is it periodically? They have, they have their initial discussions in the spring. Uh, we're invited to attend in late October. The final uh, numbers typically communicated to us in November, or in late November, early December. Has that number, so has that number been communicated to us? The number that we have for the for um, calendar year 2019 is, um, Bill, help me out, it's 13? It's a little over 13%, yes. We just right. got the communication about a month or so ago. Mm -hmm. Usually it okay. comes in late, late end of the year, of the calendar year, and it changes with the new calendar year. So if all our employees other than police and fire are subject to IMRF, mm -hmm. that would be um, you know, approximately 1,000 employees so if the contribution rate drops from where it was 16% down to 13%, which it was at one time, that's a huge savings for the city. That's correct. And I guess I'm surprised no one has ever briefed that. That's one of the elements of savings in our budget. Now, the bad news is that having had a, a terrible um, financial year uh, for the markets, for the equity markets in 2018, IMRF, like our police and fire pension funds, will likely have a negative rate of return. And that means that the employer contribution is likely to rise. So it's just something to follow. Now, um, since the individual responsible for communicating with um, IMRF resides in human resources, Director, I'd like you to uh, inform the council when that contribution rate changes every year. That's an important responsibility, and it needs to be communicated to the council because it's an important budget item. It impacts our budget. Um, and I assume you want the final, not because they give us a preliminary in the spring where they start. So, like I said, the, the final number is typically communicated in November, December. So, I assume you want to wait till the final. What, in your judgment, whatever you think needs to be communicated to the okay. council. Um, if our non-fire and police total payroll is, uh, let's say, $100 million, and that w there's a 1% swing, that's a million dollars of budget change. If it's a 3% swing, you know, from 16% down to 13%, that's a $3 million swing in our budget spread between the um, City WLP, which is where it mostly will reside, and the rest of the departments. To my recollection, this this decline this time is the is the largest decline I, I can recall. Yeah. And and again, if the returns are not going to be reflective of that, I would expect that would go up in calendar 20. I've looked into this, and up until 2010, the rate of contribution by the city of Springfield to IMRF, and it's different for each municipality. It depends what, how badly a municipality gets into debt to IMRF, but. Through 2010, the rate of contribution was 10 percent. 10 percent. We were single digits for. We were single digits quite a long, for a long time during the Davlin administration. We were single digits. So when you go from 10 percent up to 16 percent, it's on an annual basis. It's a. It's you know, significant. It's, it's a significant increase in employer uh, expense, which comes from our taxes. So uh, thanks a lot for looking into Certainly. that and for advising us down the road. Mm -hmm.
Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.